Welcome to DWBI Adda channel. Please subscribe for latest training videos. Hello everyone and welcome to the second video of neural networks and in the series of machine learning with scikit-learn. This is the second part of the video in which we are learning about the neural networks. So let's get started. So we discussed about the idea of how does a neural network works in the previous video and in this video we will be looking at some of the concepts necessary to understand the working and implementation of an artificial neural network. So the first concept that we have is known as the seeding. The seeding is a distribution given in the random subclass of the NumPy library in which what happens is when you generate a specific set of numbers usually for your training purposes in the neural network you get the same orientation of the numbers which is being generated over each iteration now for example what major problem that causes is if you're not using seeding you'll be always having a different set of numbers and your model will not be actually be able to learn from that now uh, the working of neural network works on the base of reducing the error to minimum and that is done by the concept of you know minimum error that it takes through gradient descent now gradient descent is a parabolic function as we can see this is gradient descent so it's a parabolic function through which when we start off with a specific position in an artificial neural network for example like this we the only aim that we have is to get closer to the actual value which is given as compared to the normal one so initially if you are having a error of this the idea is to have the minimum global cost of you know the cost function or the minimum error that is obtained by here so when the neural network follows this pattern of obtaining the minimum error we get the optimized results now forward propagation forward propagation is the as much as the main concept of working of an artificial neural network so we discussed about how does the synapse takes the input the threshold working inside the synapse in the neuron followed by the output that is obtained so to learn from that when a specific threshold or the decision shifts from one specific layer to the another specific layer we call that as a forward propagation through which the neural network learns to take the decision taking from the past layers now that all are the main concepts of implementation of neural networks but what made the neural networks as the best models that we have in machine learning and deep learning actually contain like making a complete new subject of deep learning is because of the back propagation or the backward propagation now what happens is neural networks are able to understand new concepts because of back propagation for example when a neural network took a decision and it was wrong what it will do it will trace back to the previous layer and then try to understand how and where did it did it wrong now the benefit that happens with that is the neural network is able to understand the the problem that it had and able to adjust its weights now when it is able to adjust its weights it can understand that the problem is been done and it tries to rectify it from the next time so changing an iteration and changing the weights and the bias in a neural network is the only concept leading us to the minimum error that can happen that is the idea of how does neural network works now let's look at some of the small examples of working of a neural network with scratch 
that is the numpy the orientation of every data science or machine learning library is done through numpy numpy uh, simply stands for numerical python and yes let's see how it's done so we have something known as a sigmoid function which is the decision part of the neuron through which it takes the main decisions so here's the function that we have written for the sigmoid function it takes the respective decision according to a specific threshold now that is known as a sigmoid function this is an example of what we know as a sigmoid function so as we can see the minimum value lies in 0 and the maximum value lies in 1 so what happens is when if I get a specific value for example anything greater than 0 0.5 for example here that value will be taken as a round off decision of 1 any value obtained above 0 0.5 to any minor differences will be taken as 1 any value obtained less than 0 0.5 will be taken as zero that is the simple working of a sigmoid function which we have defined here okay now once that is done now we have the two inputs that is the x and y values now simply what we are trying to do is that we are trying to understand a basic universal gate here so if I have these three specific input, it leads to zero. For a value of two, I have zero, three, one, and four, one. Can you guess the basic gate which will comment it down and we'll let you know. Now once our data is being taken, we develop a seeding so that we initialize the weight in a specific order each and every time so we develop the synapse after that once that is done we take the sigmoid function and we take an iteration of 10,000 now the iteration can be taken as much as possible or what happens is the values do not change after a certain point of time so if we take 10,000 rounds of iterations, that is more than enough for a small data set to be repeated over and over again so that computer can actually try to predict the values and then compare it with the output and see how good and efficient it can come after 10,000 rounds. So once that is done, we'll try to print the L1, that is the second layer layer one of our output or the output layer the second layer of our neural network and let's try to execute this so as we can see for the first output of y it was zero after complete iteration our neural network has predicted as 0.009 that is zero almost close very much close to that in a precision of scientific methods second value was also zero that was even better as 0 0.007 the third value was to give one when we have an input of three and that is 0 0.993 followed by 0 0.992 for the input if we have of four so as we can see, our basic neural network ran about 10,000 iterations, for 10,000 iterations, and then understood over the time what is the necessary output that it needs to bring and how does it needs to take the decisions. So that is the second part of the neural network series in scikit-learn. And in the next video, we'll be looking at the final concept of implementing a neural network with scikit-learn. Thank you.